Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Great Escape from Alcatraz. It plays two to six players, but it's best at three to five. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on the number of players, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game The Great Escape from Alcatraz, you can either be playing as the warden or you'll be playing as the inmates. And the inmates each have their own unique gang, as well as their own unique gang leader, maybe Diablo Domingo, you'll be playing as, or Don Bafigo or Whiskey O'Brien, as well as just the Warden, who is uh, named the Warden. If you're playing as the Warden, you're basically against all of the gang members, and you're attempting to try to stop them from escaping the island before turn 29. If you can succeed doing that, then you're going to win the game. However, if any of the uh, gangs are able to build a raft and sail off to freedom before then, they are going to win. There's a couple other ways to win the game, but in general, the game is a one versus many, with the many kind of sort of helping each other but also kind of only in it for themselves because they want to get off the island more than anything that's the most important thing about escaping alcatraz right if you've seen the movie you understand nevertheless if you can do so you win if you can't you lose and the warden will smile with a job well done there's tons of cards in the game you can play like riot cards and warden cards and gang cards based on the die that you roll it has a roll to movement aspect but it's one i like and i'll show you why let's go down below i'll show you everything you get and then let's go ahead and show you how to play. So here we have the great Alcatraz escape and everything you get in the game. As you can see, it plays two to six players and it's got all the prison inmates and they are starting in these little areas here, which are basically their cells. There's the lighthouse that goes in the middle and then there's the warden who has all of his dudes over there in the guard house. Uh, depending on the number of players in the game, depends on how many prisoners you get. Since we're playing a four player game, each of these guys are gonna get seven prisoners and the warden will get about 15 of his guards. Guards are gonna be allowed to start there, but they are actually going to be going around the island based on these little guard areas. They have little G's on them. The only certain rule about guards is that they can only have a certain amount of them in this middle area. And I think for a four player game, you can only have three guards in the middle to try and stop the prisoners from gathering items and whatnot. Additionally in the game, there's a bunch of different things all across this board here. And we'll talk about that in one second. But I want to mention that when each player gets their little prisoners, they're going to go back and forth placing them, choosing the little prison cells they start with. The guard is going to start uh, with the die, and he's going to be rolling first, and every prisoner is also going to get a stash card to begin the game. Uh, there's gang cards, there's warden cards, there's riot cards that will all be used throughout the game for different reasons, and every single player is also going to get one of these uh, specific cards based on what they are, whether they're the warden or whether they're playing as one of the dons for the prison gangs. And then behind these cards here are all of the different items you'll be using in the game, whether it's going to be armor, buoyancy tokens, uh, little wire clippers, hacksaws, these uh, pieces of rope, which count as 20 rope, uh, keys, uh, riot tokens for the riot guards, and then a raft, which is what you need in order to escape. All the rest of the extra wardens, guards, and prisoners that you're not using will be set aside, and that's pretty much what you get. You're going to get this board here, along with this box, and this beautiful rule book, which explains the game very well, and then, of course, some die. Some of these die are extra that I included for more players, uh, and, of course, the round mark which starts at one but that's pretty much it that's how you start the game off so let's go ahead and take it down below and i will show you how to play a round or two and explain the game so I went ahead and set up a four player game of the Great Alcatraz Escape. And as you can see, we're gonna have the pink, the yellow, and the white player. They have their seven inmates in either side of the uh, North Utility Corridor and the uh, South Utility Corridor. These can't be accessed currently, but they're in their little prison cells. And they're able to break out, which is gonna be the interesting part of the game, right? Now to begin, everybody's got a stash card to start the game off, which, which means that you can discard the stash card. If you have a prisoner that's being taken, you can take all their stuff that they have on them and put them on the uh, put them in your stash area and that's basically what the card does it then gets discarded after that uh, he also they also get two red keys a green rope and a wire cutter to start the game off with so everybody's going to start with some utility items that they found previous to the game starting the warden has his guards here and the turn marker is at one and all of the tokens are available along with the two die for the prisoners to begin to roll on their turn uh, so let's go ahead and begin with the warden I don't think he starts. He may or may not start with warden cards. I'm not too sure. But uh, you're going to go ahead and basically roll the die here. All right, that's an 11. That's a really good roll. And then from here, you can place your, your guards in any of the guard spaces. So that would be one movement. 
and then maybe this would be two movement and this would be three and that allocates the maximum amount of guards that you can have in the center area here but you can place out a few more if you want so that's three that's four and maybe let's see that's five then you can you can after you're done placing them out you can go ahead and choose to move them around now you have six more movement left so i can go one two three if i want and i can go four five and then i could go six if i wanted to do that and that would be the all of my movement that i would take with the guard additionally if you go to a guard space you're able to go back to the guard house and then you can go back to another space but you can't have more than one guard in each round going to a specific space it's a way for the prisoners to stop you from kind of pushing too many guards in a singular area it's also a way to allow you to have them Cap have you capture them but also not allow you to have any more guards there the guard is going to then end their turn now if the guard somehow managed to roll a five or less the guard would use that roll in addition to getting a warden card and the warden cards do specific things that's a custom one so that doesn't do much let's go ahead and show you one that's not a custom one like this one here and it says it allows the warden to inspect the guard common room inmates in the guard common room are considered caught the warden also removes any placed equipment tokens so that's a good way to stop the inmates from being able to get uh get their dudes inside this guard common room and a lot of this there's a lot of good stuff in there that prisoners are going to want so that's a card that the warden can use on their turn to stop that from happening especially if they don't have guards in there okay so that guard is now done we'll just go in a clockwise order starting with yellow in which case this player is going to go ahead and roll two dice yeah okay so he got a six which is one more than the needed to draw the uh, gang card unfortunately you almost want to have a five if this is the case but whatever and then he can go ahead and move his inmates out of the prison cells one two three four five and six when an inmate lands on one of these spaces here it protects them from the guards being able to see them which usually means that they're in like some storage closet or in a hidden underground or something like that they're protected so a guard can never capture a guy that is in a secret little like crossed off visibility space that'd be the end of this player's turn the next player is going to get to go pink let's see what he rolls eh, seven the average roll not a bad roll for an average roll so uh pink can go one two three four five uh six and seven and then finally, white. White's going to go seven as well. And white will go, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. After that, that's everybody's turn is over. You're going to move on to the next round. And the warden's going to begin by rolling the black die over here. And a six. Okay. So the warden's going to be dropping down some units or moving some units. Now, this is a good idea for the warden. One, two, three, four, five, and six. When a warden captures a dude, they can put it in either of the solitary confinement areas uh, and that will basically put the, the in a super prison, basically, in which case they only escape by certain cards and or getting freed by other prisoners. And there's some other ways that that can happen. But in general, these guys get trapped and they are hard to remove. If ever the inner and the outer solitaries get filled, any other people that get uh, taken and are captured get removed from the game they're basically they're kind of executed i would imagine and that's also a good way for the guard to capture the prisoners now if a prisoner has anything on them in, in their possession then the guard will actually capture that possession as well or possessions unless somebody plays a uh, one of these stash cards in which case all their possessions will go over here so this is kind of a last ditch maneuver all right now it's the next player's turn let's go and go with yellow and yellow's gonna roll let's say eight one two three four five and that means he can get one of these guys here and it'll go under his person. Yeah, boy. And uh, so one, two, three, four, five. So we have six, seven, so three, three more spaces for, uh, for yellow here. So maybe one, two, and three. And then we're gonna go ahead and have uh, pink go. Bam, pink is gonna get a six, seven, eight. So that means eight spaces for pink. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He landed on the key, so he's gonna get to take a key and place it under his character. And he's also in a safe location, which means the guards can't mess with him. Not so bad for pink. And then let's go ahead and go with uh, white. So four, five, and six. Uh, let's see here. Uh, one, two, three, which will net him a key and four five and six okay so that would be the end of yet another round now also let's go ahead and talk about some more stuff on the board because i think you're getting the idea of how the game is played whenever you land on any of these spaces that's the token you take whenever you want to go through a certain area like maybe you want to go through this door here or any of these red areas you have to discard a key and place it on that location and anybody then can use that key until a guard comes over and removes it thusly putting it in his stash uh, additionally, there's these little uh, white areas here, which is what you're going to use these these hacksaws for, and you'll place them on there to get your guys out. Uh, there is, uh, let's see, what else is there? There's some other stuff you can use as well. 
doors. Oh, 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 this these things here, which basically are ropes. Every rope counts as 20. And if you need to go over something higher, so for instance, this one over here is 40, you need to use two of them. Or 60, you would actually need to use three of them. And you'd have to have them on your person. So for instance, uh, if the game had been traversed quite a ways, so maybe he moved eight, so he would go all the way through here. He'd drop his little, his little rope there and he'd move here. Um, on his next couple turns, he might get all the way over here, right? If he has these two ropes on him, he'll be able to go one and two, and he have two ropes so he can get through here. Now, what's the reason for going through all this? I kind of explained it previously, meaning that uh, you're going to want to get buoyancy materials. And these are all the buoyancy materials. They basically look like little rafts, in which case you'll be having these little things here when you walk across them. When you get three of them, you can trade them in for a raft at any of the locations that have these little S's. In addition to these uh, little S's, they'll give you a stash card as well that lets you build the raft. And if you have that little raft, along with one of your dudes on an area here, at the beginning of your turn, you get three, three free spaces. Well, actually, this would be called a raft, not, not these. These are the buoyancy materials. <laughs> you get three, three, three free spaces every round. After every round you go through, if you ever get to here with one of your guys, you win as the uh, as the bad guys or as the as the prisoners. So that's you're trying to escape to freedom. There's a couple other rules as far as maybe going over here to the docks and how they kind of work. But I think that's the basic idea for the game. Uh, there's some interesting things like this lighthouse. The warden will have certain cards will let you go and place these in certain areas. And if you're within visibility of the lighthouse, you'll get captured. There's certain rooms that protect you from certain things as well as additional little hidey holes. And of course, getting through around this outer area here is a little bit more difficult more challenging the gang cards change things up allowing you to enter the northern and southern corridors allowing you to get out in certain areas and they also provide you with additional movement and whatnot and the warden cards will let you capture guys even when you don't have guards and other interesting little mechanics that change the game as well at every 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 rounds you won't be able to use cards but you'll have the choice of taking an extra die to roll which means you'll get an extra one here. Or you can choose to draw a card, and everybody gets to do that. They just can't simply play cards before they roll. And uh, that is pretty much the idea of the game. If you can get three buoyancy materials on your characters, or on a character, and then trade it in for a raft, and then escape with the raft with your character to freedom, you'll win. If it goes all the way to 29 and no one has escaped, the warden wins. And if everybody is stuck either in solitary or removed from the game, the warden will also win that way as well. The last little thing is, as wardens, uh, basically capture dudes. So if you have a dude here and he happened to have like a key on him, for instance, and the warden got, let's say, a four, he can move his guy over here, he'd capture this guy, he put him in here, and then he'd take this little key and put it in his stash. And the warden can actually use the different materials to discard and gain new warden cards. So that kind of helps them out. It helps the warden out as well. And players are able to discard these for their gang cards as well if they want. Maybe they don't need these tokens as much. They can go ahead and use them to discard for their gang cards that will in some way help them throughout the game. But that's the idea of the game, the great Alcatraz escape. Uh, let's come up and I'll tell you what I think about it and any other little caveats. So let's talk about the Great Alcatraz Escape. And the first thing I want to say is that there is a couple extra things I want to talk about. First of all, every prisoner is only able to carry one of each type of tool on them, or, and they can only use those with that specific prisoner going across certain things like walls and whatnot. However, you'll have a stash, and you can also have your prisoners go back to their cells to stash the items, thusly putting it in next to your character card as opposed to on the board. And any prisoner at any time can use stuff in front of you from your stash to utilize it for any of the pieces on the board. So that's kind of an interesting little trick. Additionally, prisoners can fight each other too. They'll actually go into the same space trying to take each other's equipment, rolling die to fight each other, and the loser will go to the infirmary where they're not safe, and the winner will get to take their stuff. So there's some interesting, like, take, not take that, but like aggressive combat between the players who are trying to escape because it doesn't really matter if your if your allies get messed up as long as your guy escapes to freedom so you might need to kick somebody in the shins as you're running to freedom so that they get caught instead let's talk about a couple of the cards the gang cards so first of all one allows one inmate in a cell to instantly fast travel to any free hex in the med bay which is actually outside of the area which is kind of nice uh, or, sorry, at, at the very end of the uh, inner area. The ferry ticket. Instead of winning the game by going to one of the S points and getting out, you can actually enter the ferry and you won't need a buoyancy token and you can escape that way with this card. Diversion card. Allows a gang leader to send one guard of their choice back to the guardhouse. So as they're about to be captured, no they're not and they can move their character freely. 
Pick up Diet Cola. This card adds 10 to whatever sum is total is rolled. Very, very useful. Then you got all the guard cards, like Rec Area Inspection and the Model Building Inspection. Any of those inspection cards, if you're in there and you're not hidden, you're going to get captured by the Warden. The warden has Intelligence. Force every gang leader to show them at least one gang card. And then send the Blood Hounds. Instead of rolling, this card allows the Warden to sniff out and send to Solitary all inmates in a blind spot in and or inside a hidden utility corridor. So it lets, you, it lets the Warden secretly find those people who've been sitting there hiding for too long. And there's just a bunch of other stuff. Whether the Warden maybe has his birthday party going on, you can also create your own cards like you saw in my example. And then, of course, the Warden can also drink cola, which doubles whatever total sum is rolled, which might be a little more useful depending on what you roll. Uh, and that is the basic idea of it. I mean, the game is a roll to move. What's nice about it is when you roll low, you can get those gang cards. The one negative I can say about the roll to move aspect in this game is I would have liked it to have been at least six as opposed to five to get those cards because there was so many times where we were rolling six and it just, we were always like, ah, oh, it's still not even the average, so we don't get the card. It was only at five. But I can understand why I'd be at five, especially when you're rolling two, three, four. Those are really low. Um, additionally, when you want to store things, it's very beneficial, but it's also a backtracking method in which you're going to have to go back to your cell and put the cards, uh, put your items in a certain area. You want to make sure you try and hit all the different areas on the board that provide tools for your specific inmates so they can get to a certain area. And sometimes it's better to not put all of your eggs in one basket. You want to have a couple inmates going to different areas, collecting different things to then be able to stash back to you to get those buoyancy materials to escape. The warden has a lot of guards and the guards are very very difficult to deal with there's very few gang cards that will let you do deal with them so it's a lot of who do you think the warden's going to go for based on your turn where you want to move your guys based on that knowledge and whether you're going to hope and pray that the warden rolls lower doesn't use a warden card to increase their die movement the game has got a lot of like the nervousness where you're like i don't know if he's going to go there i know he's he has the chance to take my guy out but this guy's a little farther so maybe he'll leave my guy alone because that guy's getting out there or uh you know it's the last ditch the game's getting very close to the end and people are really close with their buoyancy materials and they're escaping through the rafts and so the warden's pushing over here and over there and you're like okay well i'm gonna just kind of wait and bide my time and then all of a sudden use my gang cards to push my movement up and to escape and get those last three turns out of the way but it's still a waiting game at the end so you're still gonna need to do those weight of those three turns in order to escape alcatraz it's a really fun little game it reminds me of a classic style game it's got all the classic aspects of the old style dungeon games the old style hex movement games but it re it remodernizes all of those actions and all of those roll the move stuff. Normally, I don't like roll the move games. I've said it many, many times, but this is an exception to that rule. I really enjoy when games give you certain rules uh, that change the way roll the move is work. So it's got that luck, but then you have cards that negate that luck or the ability to have cards that are sometimes even better. Sometimes I actually want to roll a five rather than roll a 12 because you're going to get so much more. And one final thing, when you roll doubles, you can roll again and add the total. So that, that can be a very big use. I don't know why I didn't say that before, but yeah, when you roll doubles, so if you roll two twos or two threes, that actually will you roll again. But if you do roll doubles, you don't get to draw a card. So there is that kind of back and forth. I don't know how you wanna, how you wanna look at it, I suppose. Overall, this is a really fun game. I like the artwork, I like the quality of the game. Um, I, I like the theme. This is a very unique theme I haven't played before. And I think people who uh, dig those older classic games want a little bit of a modern twist to it. They like one versus many with also the combative many against each other. That's a really, really uh, favorite theme of mine. I like the feel of working with people against a common evil, but still, I care more about myself than everybody else. That really makes sense, especially for the theme of this game. Enjoyable. Definitely one of those games I think you should pick up. If you don't like games that involve roll and movement, period, it's not going to be for you. This game is rather long, I suppose, for a roll and move style game. So maybe that might not be up your alley as well. And then the fact that the graphics and all the artwork and all that are kind of meant to be more of a classic feel. So that also may or may not be for you. But as far as the gameplay goes, as far as playing the cards go, the theme goes, it's all very and it all feels very, very realistic to trying to uh, trying to escape something. Now, I don't know about escaping prison. That sounds like 
a, a bit more of a venture than most, but overall, The Great Alcatraz Escape is a solid game, and I recommend it. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment, and all those help would do greatly appreciate it, as well as taking a look at the game The Great Escape from Alcatraz. It's a fun little game. I really enjoyed this, like, take back on a classic with some modern twists, and the fact that this, the game has luck in it, but the luck is all mitigated with the ability to draw those cards, which may make all the difference, and they're really fun to draw. It feels good drawing those cards. It's always a positive player experience, as long as I'm not rolling a six. Apparently six is the one thing that irritates me. Move that five to a six, and, and perfect, perfect for me. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, takes our lists, and more, and our live stream every seven, every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, except for this next Wednesday, it's on Tuesday. But in general, 7.30 p.m. PST, we'll do a lot of games just like this live on stream on Facebook. It's a big one, it's probably the biggest, in my opinion, the biggest on Facebook as far as views goes. All right, guys, check out these other people, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, the show me how to win, cardboard stacker, all of my friends. And as always, I look forward to escaping Alcatraz with you. And maybe Sean Connery. I think he is in that movie. He, he probably won't escape me with that. Next time, slow motion. You're editing this to make it slow motion, right? You are, right?